Hello folks, this is going to be a very, very quick tutorial. I haven't done one for a million trillion years. And this is a song um, that I just heard in the car. It's called If I Fell by Maroon 5. Um, it was originally a Beatles song. And um, Mr. Levine or Mr. Levine from Maroon 5 does a, a fantastic stripped down version of this. And so I'm going to um, attempt to play it now. And um, the first thing you need to do is to Google If I Fell by Maroon 5. And the first thing that comes up is probably um, the chords that you'll be using. Um, and they're not your bog standard, you know, C, G, D, E type of chord. So um, I was going to do this on the um, on the tenor, but the soprano uke is a lot smaller. And so it's a lot easier to find the chords. So I will now do um, the chords for this song, If I Fell. So the first chord is a C sharp minor. Um, and what, what happens is you have to grab your two strings on the top here um, with these two fingers. And then you have to reach across with your pinky finger another two frets across. So there's a gap of two frets between these two fingers on the two top strings and the bottom string. And the pinky finger hits the bottom string. And it's a really difficult chord, especially to stop it from buzzing. Quite a lovely sort of melodic chord, minor chord, very sad chord. C sharp minor, C chord. Oh, that's a lovely easy chord. Third fret, bottom string, and then we have A B. Now the B chord is the bottom two strings with with that finger, and then the top string, second fret, um, second string down from the top, and then the third fret, top string. Now you can also do that as a bar chord, you bar the whole first fret, and then this second finger goes on the second string from the top on the second fret, um, second fret, and this third finger goes on the top string, third fret. So you can either do it the uh, open chord way, or the bar chord way. That's the B chord. Now the next chord is a G sharp minor. Um, Going on from um, that bar chord method, because that's probably the best way of doing it, you need to bar that um, first fret, um, and then this second finger goes to the bottom string, the third finger goes to the second string from the top, and then on the fourth fret, the little pinky finger goes second string down, oh sorry, third string down from the top. And that is your G sharp minor. And then you've got a D minor. So there's lots of um, minor chords, which is what gives it this sort of sad sound because all your D, uh, your minor chords tend to be the ones that are sad. Um, that's as much as I know about music theory. I don't know anything about music theory. Um, I'd have to um, discuss it with my son, but I probably wouldn't an understand the answer. And this is a D minor. And that's another chord we're using, a D minor. Um, third string down from the top on the first fret. And then we are going to grab the two top strings a in the second fret with the second and the third finger. So these two fingers, these ones here, go on the two top, top string second fret, and then the first finger goes third, uh, first fret three strings down. That D minor chord. G chord, lovely little triangle. Get these two fingers and go to your second um, fret. These are frets. And we go boom, boom. We leave a gap between. So we go bottom string and third string up from the bottom. And then we make a little triangle in the third fret in between those two on the um, second string up from the bottom in the third fret. Okay, boom, boom, boom. And that's your G. Now they show a different E minor chord, but I'm gonna do the E minor chord that I am used to. Um, and the E minor chord I'm used to is bottom string, um, first finger, second string up on the um, third fret. And so you're just going like a little diagonal line. Bottom string, second string up from the bottom, third string up from the bottom, starting at the second fret. Boom, boom, boom. E minor. Then there's this lovely little, um, what they call a C9 chord. Now if you think about an A chord, which looks like that, what you need to do with a C9 is slide it up, one fret, so there's now one fret up, and then you grab this third finger and you put it on the bottom, um, uh, directly beneath that, that the second finger, okay? 
and that is a C9. And then um, we've got an F chord. Now we know the F chord, third string down from the bottom, first fret, top string, second fret. And then we've got the F minor, which is these two fingers, first fret. This one goes three from, um, from the top. This one goes on the top. And then your little pinky finger is gonna grab where um, the bottom string on the third fret, where your C chord would normally be. And then your G7 chord. It's kind of like the G, but you turn the triangle around the other way. Okay, so when you're doing a, a G7 chord, what you do is first finger goes second string up from the bottom in the first fret, and then these two fingers make the triangle in the second fret. One goes on the bottom, one goes straight up from the bottom on the second fret. So, boom, boom, boom. G, G7, and then the last um, one that they give you is a B flat. And the B flat, I think we already did a B, um, it, they're saying B flat and it's actually, um, oh sorry, no, we, sorry, that I showed you the B, um, the B flat chord. Um, they also do a B, so this is B flat. You can either do it um, two, two bottom strings, then the second string from the top. I showed you that, but if you slide it up, it becomes a B. Okay, so you can bar chord it, B flat, slide it up one chord, B. So these bar chords, you can slide them up. Okay, so they're all the chords that you need to know, and they're at the top of that sheet, If I Fell, by Maroon 5. Well, as is typical for me, um, I'm going to attempt to show you kind of what this song sounds like. I would suggest you go and see it done by Maroon 5, because... Um, uh, you can look it up on YouTube. It would be a much better way of learning how this song is supposed to sound. But I'm going to give it a crack. I haven't I haven't practiced it, and it's going to be terrible because I'm really bad at doing these chords. But the thing about um, difficult chords is, um, if you don't play them, you won't get good at them. So um, you know, I'm used to you know playing around with these. All really simple. I can find all these chords really easily, but that's because I practiced them. Um, when you first start playing, the thought of trying to do a bar code is, is really difficult. And the, the idea of lost anyway um, you get my drift you really need to uh, muck around a lot and then you, you tend to like at the start get stuck in a rut with with um, strumming patterns eventually you'll be able to play different strumming patterns etc etc so um you will find times you you'll you get stuck in a rut and people especially all your relatives who are merciless in their um, appreciation of your skills um will be saying oh that all sounds the same and it, probably because it does um and then again a lot of the time everything sounds the same but that's all right um as long as you're having fun but have a go at playing difficult chords so enough um nattering on by me i will attempt to play this song um the chords that i'm having difficulty with this chord is I'm having difficulty with, and on the tenor I, I really have difficulty, so I'll have to really practice it on the tenor. But sometimes these difficult chords, practice them on the soprano first until you get really confident with them, and then you can extend yourself onto um, a larger scale, a scaled instrument like a tenor or a baritone. Um, so, um, C minor, and the one that I'm really having trouble with is this one, this G sharp minor. Because the G sharp minor needs to be done down here, so you need to go, you need to go from the B, which is here, so I'm going to miss that one a few times when I try and demonstrate. If I give my heart to you, I must be sure from the very start 
that you would love me more than her if I trust in you oh please don't run and hide if I love you Stand the pain, and I would be sad if the new love was in vain. So, um, you probably noticed I didn't start at the beginning of the song, and that's because a lot of these chords I don't have problems with, but um, this C sharp minor chord is really difficult. So, I'm going to show you the beginning of the song, but I'm going to make mistakes. Um, but the way you get good at this, like I said, got to practice the chords you really struggle with. So, if I fell in love with you, would you promise to be true and help me? And then I need to get to this G sharp minor. Understand, because I've been in, been in love before and I found that love is more than just holding hands. Oh. The joys of strumming. Now, you, when you start playing, you get tend to up and down strum. Becomes your mainstay. Now, you could play this song, I'm assuming, with that chord, with that strumming pattern, I, I think. Anyway. If I fell, fell in love with you, I fell in love with you, would you promise to be true? And Oh, that sounds terrible. Anyway, you get my drift. You could play it with it, with it, but it, it doesn't suit the mood of the song. So, um, if you listen to the song played online, you'll you'll hear and and the um, this instrument's quite a percussive instrument, believe it or not. So, um, you can cover your mute your strings and just practice. I would suggest you actually listen to him singing and the way he's playing it in the unstripped version, uh, stripped down version. Sorry, not the unstripped version. He has his clothes on. Um, Listen to that um, song, mute the strings, and just and just try to get the vibe and the rhythm, and you'll get a strumming pattern. So it's sort of like, if I fell in love with you, I fell in love with you, would you promise to be true and help me understand? Because I've been in love before, and I find it more than just... Holding hands, good afternoon. So that's a way of getting a feel for a strum. You can do this up, down, up, down, chunk, etc., etc., and that's how you normally start. You know, like. So you will get that um, at the start, you'll need that sort of very solid guidance as to how to strum. But I think for most people that do things organically, learning how to do this just in a rhythmic sort of musical way, in an organic way, might work better for you than trying to um, stick to a rigid pattern, maybe. Um, it depends on how you play. But I, I, that's the best I can do for you. So if, if you start the song, it's like, if I fell in love with you, would I promise to be true and help me? Understand, and this chord is killing me. Understand, because I've been in love, been in love before, and I found that love is more than just holding hands. If I give my heart to you, I must be shown from the very Okay, so um, sorry about how badly that was played. Um, it's probably good to actually learn to play the song before you try and teach other people to do it, but 
what I'm trying to show you is that um, uh, I'm a lazy bastard and also that um, sometimes you just got to um, give it a go um, and hopefully there's enough information there for you to start trying to play but I'm gonna have to go away and practice that G um, C sharp minor and that transition from the B to that this chord here which I actually have to look at the, the keyboard um, so I need to be able to do that G sharp so from the B to the G sharp and I keep putting but once again there's chords like that that I've had problems with in the past when I used to do this Lonely days along. And then there's a, a part of that song where I go. Um, tricky chord passages if you play the song enough and I haven't been playing enough so I'm getting terrible now but anyway My way tonight, and I'll see you When I first started playing that song, that chord passage, I thought there's no way I'm ever going to be able to jump around and play it. You will be able to do it. If you practice it and just probably practice it slower at the start and you will get it. Anyway, um, hopefully that's helpful. Um, leave a comment below um, and read the description of the video um, and um, good luck with the song and when I get better at it, I will do a performance. So if you want more videos like this, uh, please um, put it in the comments, put a song that you might want me to attempt, um, and I will attempt it. And um, let me know what you think of the lesson. Um, let me know if you think it sucks, that's great. Like I said, you want more videos, um, let me know, and um, I'm happy to uh, torture you with the ukulele. Um, let me know if you've, um, previously had lessons with me and you missed me um, that would be nice to know also and please subscribe um, I've lost my monetization I'm not doing this for monetization Google was buying me one beer a month about five dollars a month um, so it wasn't for the money but it's nice to know that um, you're getting something and it's also nice to know that your subscriber numbers are increasing because it means that you are um, helping more people um, learn to play this marvelous instrument the ukulele anyway um, uh, See you in the next one.